All right, so for the start of this video, I actually did decide to begin with the microbiology course again, because when we are going to modules and going through the details of the modules, this general course materials for week one is going to be the same, even though this header um, is not in each of the classes and week one here at the end is not in each of the classes, it contains a lot of the same information. So I'm going to um, go through this tab, uh, each page by page here, and then it will be more specific to your course. So the first one here, of course, it says Bio 206 course syllabus, but your course syllabus will be here as a link as well as the first thing. <clears throat> so I do say to please take the time to read through the entire syllabus that I have recorded going over the syllabus into several short videos. The playlist posted below will play them all in order if you choose to watch them all at once, or if you prefer, you may watch them individually as they are easy to navigate and quick to watch as individual videos. <clears throat> if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them on the general questions discussion board or contact me via text on the Remind app or via email in Canvas. So here you will have your dot doc, so your Word document version of your syllabus, and here the PDF version of your syllabus. Um, if you click on this little thing here, you can actually see a preview of the document um, and then you can kind of scroll through it if you don't want to download it and then you can minimize that again and it goes away if you click on the actual link it will download that file so that you can open it up and it'll be in your downloads and you can save it anywhere you'd like on your device down here is where i have the playlist um, for your syllabus so i do as i mentioned i have gone over each of the different sections of the syllabus I have read it out loud for those that would prefer to hear it rather than reading it. And then I've also gone into some detail with, with each of the sections. <clears throat> so you may have already been here and done this as it's the first tab and I directed you here. Or if you haven't, please do come here and check these out. So again, for your course, they will be named something different, but it will look just like this. So to get back to the modules, you can either go over here and click to modules or you to get to the next module, you can go to click next here. I'm going to click on modules and you can see it brings me back here. The second one is the introduction to Canvas videos, which is what you're watching now. Um, so if you click on that link, then this is where I have these Canvas videos posted. The next one is important information about Respondus Lockdown Browser and Monitor. So here uh, it says, please note that Lockdown Browser does not work on a Chromebook. For those of you that use a Chromebook, you will need to access a different computer for your syllabus quiz and the exams throughout the semester. I would suggest using or borrowing a computer from another person for the quiz slash exams that, excuse me, require the lockdown browser and monitor. Alternatively, there are computers in the SC4 Library and Academic Achievement Center if those are available uh, for this purpose. All other work may be done on any device throughout the semester. Lastly, if none of these options work for you or you are unable to find an additional option, you may choose to take the exams in the testing center. Again, that's only if this is available during this semester. If you choose this option, you need to contact me during the first week of class so we can confirm you are using this option and ensure that you are able to do so. The first week will not be accessible to you until you complete the syllabus quiz. So your first week of actual material for the course, which would actually be your second module, will not be available to you until you complete the syllabus quiz to be able to move on. Uh, this requires the use of Respondus Lockdown Browser and Monitor, so please plan your schedules accordingly. <clears throat> so I apologize for the inconvenience uh, regarding Chromebook, but if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. So um, again, if you have a Chromebook, you do need to find an alternate computer. You only need to find that other computer to take this one quiz this first week, the syllabus quiz, which is to ensure that everybody has it set up appropriately. You've downloaded it, worked through it. This information is also available in the syllabus on how to do that and work through it, as well as the city syllabus videos. <clears throat> so the syllabus quiz for the first week, and then the only other time that you have to use these programs is when you take exams in the semester. So um, not very often, so hopefully you can find another computer that you can download these on and access these. Otherwise, you can use any other device that works for you throughout the semester. All right, so I'm going to go back to modules and we're going to go to the next one. <clears throat> so we're on important information about Respondus Lockdown Browser and Monitor. Now we have our required notifications and subscriptions in Canvas. So I did mention this in the first video where you need to subscribe to the different um, discussion boards 
and have some notifications. So in this first one, these are your required notifications that you have to change the settings in. So you are required, you must set up the following notifications. These notifications will alert you either via email or text, depending on how you want to set it up, to important information in our classroom. So here are the steps to go through setting up notifications. So you're going to log on to Canvas, which you already are. You're going to go to your account over here and then go to settings and then look up the ways to contact you. So this is how you're going to set up your notifications, whether it's going to be email addresses or phone numbers so that you can get texts, anything that you want to use for notifications. And then you're going to switch it to where you have these required notifications. So next to announcements, you need to check the mark to receive notifications. And then for submission comment. So anytime I make a comment on one of your assignments, you get a notification about that. Uh, and then you can add any other ones that you'd like. <laughs> Similarly, there are required subscriptions, so you must subscribe to both the general questions and discussions thread, as well as the helpful resources discussions thread. Uh, this will allow you to receive emails when one of your classmates posts something in these discussions. So then you can reply to those posts right through your email. So again, logging into Canvas, then you're going to choose the subscription button, which I did go through in the first video. All right, so next are the Remind app instructions. So I say, please download the free Remind app available at that website to your phone or tablet if you have one. You can also access the service using a computer without an app. Remind allows you to text me on my personal phone with class questions while protecting our personal information. I will, in general, be able to answer questions more quickly via Remind. However, please keep in mind that there will be times when I am not available and there will be delays in response times. Um, so this easy setup on smartphones once you download the Remind app, which looks like this, then you can send a text to this number. So this would be like where you would put the telephone number, you would put this number, and then you would write the message at bio. And this is going to be different depending on the class you're in. So don't do this one unless you're in this class, um, but this is going to be different each semester. So you would, where you would write your message to somebody, you would actually put the at, and then you would put whatever is in here for your class. That would automatically enroll you in the class. Then you can go to the Remind app and you'll see that you're enrolled in our class. Then you can text in the class. So you can text me and then we can text back and forth. Once we establish that first text back and forth, you can actually send the messages through your regular messenger message app. Um, it doesn't always have to be through the Remind app. It will go to your regular messages. And then we can text back and forth that way. Um, again, this is the easiest way to get a hold of me. Um, I'm often very quick to respond this way, but you can also email me because I'm also quick to respond through email. So this is a requirement of the class, though, because if I need to send out an immediate notification, something um, that needs to be sent out immediately, I will do it via the Remind app because I'm hoping that that's going to get to everybody faster than any other method would. All right, so going back to our modules. We've gone through these notifications here. The next one is a peer review assignments tutorial. Now this is not in all of my classes, so if you don't have this, don't worry about it. I'm gonna go over that in uh, the next video for this specific course. So for now, I'm going to ignore that one. The next one is submitting lecture notes on Canvas and note taking links. Um, so in this one, I go over how you will submit assignments in this class. Um, you will need to take notes on either the lectures or the text, if you have a text, uh, depending on the course, you will or won't. <clears throat> so you'll take notes. You, I recommend that you take notes as you go. Um, they should include important terms and their definitions. So as you're taking notes, whether it be um, from a text or whether it be from a video, what you do need to note are important terms and the definitions. They also should include headers. So you need to include some sort of headers in your notes. So if that is um, skeletal system video one, if it is chapter two, um, section one or part one, if it is, um, you know, module three, part one, if it's week 10, part one or part two, um, I need to know which video it is that you're referencing or which chapter of the text you are referencing so that I can go through there and ensure that you have written down all of the important terms, all the important definitions, and you've gotten all of the different important pieces for that chapter. I recommend that you take meaningful quality notes. 
I look for quality over quantity. So while I do want to be sure that you're covering the material and you're not missing any big important concepts, um, it is more important that you have quality notes than jotting down a bullet point for every single sentence that you read. In order to earn credit for your notes, you can do either of the following. So this is how you're going to submit your notes. One, you can handwrite your notes. So you can take when you are watching the video or when you're reading your text, um, you can take handwritten notes. And then what you can do is you can take photos of each of those pages of notes, compile them into one document, and then upload them to the Canvas assignment. Now, to compile them into one document, you can do this in, in multiple ways. And one way I suggest is you using the Genius Scan app, or you can use a document program like Microsoft Word or Google Documents. If you use the Genius Scan app, which I do recommend, um, down here, these are notes for option one. If using the Genius Scan app, I do recommend that you watch the posted video in order to ensure your notes are compiled appropriately and the images are readable. So when you take pictures, <clears throat> You can take them on your regular camera app on your phone, or you can take them in the Genius Scan app. When you do that, however, the Genius Scan app will convert your photos oftentimes into black and whites, um, which may not be a bad thing. However, what it does do is it can wash out a lot of people's handwriting. So in that tutorial, I describe that and I go through the process of taking the pictures and how to use the filter to be able to make sure that you're getting your accurate photos uploaded. I also show you how to correctly adjust the images and make sure they're in the correct order. And you want to make sure that you do that. They all need to be upright in the correct order as presented in the videos or the text, and then also legible. So you wanna make sure that your pictures are not blurry. So that's the first option. Um, and actually the first part of the first option is using that Genius Scan app. The second one would be Microsoft Word or Google Documents. And that would be where you would take your photos and then you could maybe email them to yourself, for example, and then download them from your email and insert them into a Word document or a Google document. So if that's easier for you, then I suggest that. However, if you do do that, the images you need to have blown up that image to be one photo per page of the document. Um, so you will lose points if you have the actual pictures be smaller than that page of document, okay? Um, it is important that I be able to read them and oftentimes even if you can read them on your computer screen, um, when the images get so small, if people try to put multiple pages or multiple photos rather on a page, it gets too small for me to be able to read and if I can't read it, I can't grade it. So make sure that you make each photo a page or at least something similar to a whole page in Microsoft Word or Google Documents. The second option would be to type your notes, of course. So if that is an option that works best for you, if you're a faster or more, more proficient typer than you are a handwriter, um, you can do that. Um, but if you like to handwrite, I, I like to handwrite. So if you like to handwrite, feel free to use the first option and most people do. Uh, if you prefer to type, you can do that. Then all you have to do is simply attach and upload the file. So some of these options here, I've basically described kind of what I've written here. Also more information here, when attaching files to any assignment, all pages must be combined into a single document. This is extremely important. Um, please double check your file prior to attachment. Make sure the file opens in the proper orientation and be sure that all items are legible. Uh, I go over this multiple times in the syllabus videos as well. It's also bolded and asterisked and everything inside of the syllabus because <clears throat> you can upload to an assignment, you can attach something to assignment multiple times. So say you su submit something on a Monday and then you realize you totally forgot a whole assignment or a chunk of it um, and then you need to combine that into a new file and submit the new file. Um, whatever is most recently uploaded is what will be graded. So make sure that you have everything you need in one single file and that that one single file is attached. Now this is incredibly important, um, not only that it all be in one single file, but that it actually be attached. Uh, so make sure that you go back in after you have attached your file and submitted it 
to make sure that it is in there. So I always, always suggest that everybody log out, um, X out, you know, restart the computer, whatever, go back in, load up Canvas again, go into the assignment and check that it is there. Not only should you check that it is there, you should click on it and scroll through to make sure it is the actual document you meant to submit. Um, because oftentimes students will say, you know, I thought it was submitted, and then for whatever reason, maybe their internet dropped or something like that, and it didn't submit. There's no file, and they didn't check. <clears throat> um, secondly, uh, sometimes when people say, well, I did check, but then what actually got uploaded was the blank file that they had downloaded to work on, and not the actual file that they had completed to then upload. Um, so then it was just a blank file. In both of those cases, you still would not get any points. You could, however, use the free passes that you'll learn about in the syllabus, um, but I will not be giving any points back or any additional options for people to turn things in. That's why I stress it now to make sure that you double check every single time and just get into that habit. The last note here is that Canvas will not allow you to both attach a document to an assignment and type in the text box. Uh, it will appear as though Canvas will allow this, but it will delete one of them after you hit submit. So to work around this, um, if you feel like you need to type in the text box for whatever reason and submitting a file is necessary, submit your assignment twice. So I would attach the file, submit it, go back in and then type the text and then submit it again. That said, there really shouldn't be a reason why you need to type in the text box. Please don't type in the text box your name and then like submitted or your name with the assignment or the assignment submitted. Uh, because what that does is I get an email for every time someone types in a text box. And if I have 100 students each semester all typing like, thank you, submitted, um, then I'm getting a whole bunch of emails with just thank you, submitted. Um, <clears throat> I will see those notes when I'm grading. Um, and that is fine, however, it's not necessary, and then I just get a whole bunch of emails. So unless it's necessary, um, there really shouldn't be a reason to use the text box. Down here I have some just kind of links. Maybe it's been a while since you've taken courses and you need a refresher on note-taking. Um, maybe your note-taking you're not so comfortable with, you don't feel like it's all that great, maybe you want some other options. Um, these are some links to kind of work on uh, different ways to take notes, um, just in case you're interested. I'm going to click next to go to the next in line in the modules tab. And the next one is this genius scan app for uploading lecture notes and assignments video tutorial. So I mentioned that when you submit your lecture notes that you can use the genius scan app and that's what this is here. So this is the tutorial where I go through and I explain exactly how you can use it and exactly how you can on iOS, <clears throat> submit directly to Canvas. It's a little bit different with Android. With Android, you would need to, to use the Genius Scan app, save the file to your device, and then you can go to the Canvas app and upload it from your device. On iOS, you can go directly from the Genius Scan app and submit it to the Canvas app. You can do that in Android, but only if you purchase the upgraded version. <clears throat> All right, so back to modules. <clears throat> that was the general overview that is found in all of the classes. So from here on out, the rest is going to be specific to this class. I will create a different video uh, or an additional piece that is going to be specific to your class. But all of these items, with the exception of the peer review here, in this first section of the general course materials is going to be the same throughout the classes. So again, if you have any questions on any of these things, please do comment on the general discussions question board or general questions discussion board and, um, or you can text me or you can email me.